Now the layers of the stomach. The stomach has four layers. Outside there is the serous layer, then the muscle layer. The muscle layer has three components. Outer longitudinal, middle circular and inner oblique layers. These muscles uh, make the uh, uh, food particle um, compress and mix all the food particles. And the, then the submucus and the mucus layer. Mucus layer has some interesting features like uh, acid secreting cell, bicarbonate secreting cell and the hormone secreting cell. Now we will see what is inside the stomach. Here is the stomach and different layers are seen here. Here we see that the outside there is the serosa, this is the serous layer. Then this is the muscle layer. Here is the outer longitudinal muscle. Here is the middle circular muscle and here is the inner oblique muscle. Then the submucosa. Here we see all the vessels uh, remain in this submucosa. Here, from here to here, this is the mucosa. In the mucosa, there is the uh, epithelial layer. Here is the lamina propria and there is the muscularis mucosa. This thing jointly known as the mucosa. So the epithelium, lamina propria and the muscularis mucosa. Here is the muscularis layer, muscularis propria but this is the proper muscle layer. Uh, here is the mucus muscle layer. Uh, do not confuse with these two layers. And now we can uh, see the stomach in situ. Here we see the stomach, uh, outside there is the serous layer, then the muscle layer. Here we see the longitudinal muscle along the long axis of the stomach. Here is the circular muscle and here is the oblique muscle. Here we see the longitudinal muscles along the laser curvature and here the longitudinal muscle along the greater curvature. This longitudinal muscle mainly remain along these curvatures of the stomach and the contraction of this longitudinal muscle causes the propulsion of food from this stomach into the duodenum and the part of this uh, pyloric end the longitudinal muscle also forms the sphincter of the pylorus here is the uh, section through the pylorus here we see the outside there is the longitudinal muscle and some fiber of this longitudinal muscle enters into this uh, deep fiber here we see it and here is the circular muscle of the stomach here we see uh, all over the stomach there is the circular muscle but in this uh, in this uh, pyloric end the circular muscle is thickened here we see the thickened circular muscle at the pyloric end. This thickened um, circular muscle forms the sphincter at this pylorus. Here the section through this pylorus we see the circular muscles forming the sphincter. This contraction of this circular muscle causes the closure of this um, sphincter and the uh, contraction of this longitudinal muscle causes the opening of this sphincter uh, of the uh, pylorus. So uh, the function of this circular, uh, circular muscle is the uh, uh, while contracting at this uh, sphincter they um, may, uh, makes the stomach to store the food uh, and um, when there is a contraction of this uh, sphincteric muscle there is relaxation of this muscle of the body. And uh, these are the circular muscle. And uh, finally, there is the oblique muscle. Here is the oblique muscle. We see the oblique muscle from this uh, cardiac notch, they um, sweep downward. And um, uh, this is, uh, this uh, remain along the, um, this part of the stomach. But uh, in this, uh, along the laser curvature, there is absent of this oblique muscles. The function of this oblique muscle is the um, mixing of the food particles within the stomach. So these are the uh, muscle fibers. These muscle fibers is innervated through the vagus nerve and the 
sympathetic nerve here we see the nerve supply of the stomach here is the uh, parasympathetic supply of the stomach that comes from the vagus nerve we know there are two vagus nerves here is the left vagus nerve and here is the right vagus nerve uh, this nerve passes through the mediastinum and along the uh, anterior surface of the esophagus this left vagus nerve forms the anterior vagal trunk here is the anterior vagal trunk and it uh, passes from the uh, thorax into the abdomen through the esophageal op opening at the level of the 10th thoracic vertebra so it is important uh, to remember that left vagus nerve here is the left vagus nerve that forms the anterior vagal trunk and the right vagus nerve that forms the posterior vagal trunk here is the anterior vagal trunk that means the left vaga, uh, vagus nerve uh, uh, after entering into the abdomen this uh, left vagus nerve uh, divides into two branches here you see on branch is the uh, gastric branch along the laser curvature of the stomach and there is another branch that is the hepatic branch that passes within the laser omentum and then it divides into uh, into the uh, hepatic branch and the pyloric branch here we see the pyloric branch that supplies the uh, the pre pyloric pylorus and the duodenum uh, this is the left um, vagal trunk and along the laser curvature the um, uh, gastric nerve that supplies the uh, uh, remaining of this stomach uh, anterior surface and in the posterior uh, side we see here there is the posterior vagal trunk um, uh, that enters into the um, uh, abdomen through the esophageal opening at the level of 10th thoracic vertebra and entering the uh, abdomen they divide into the posterior vagal trunk uh, the posterior gastric nerve that is along the laser curvature and the celiac branch that uh, passes downward and this vagus nerve uh, is the uh, is the uh, secretomotor to the stomach that means the stimulation of this vagus uh, nerve causes the uh, uh, secretion of the hydrochloric acid and in relation to this uh, uh, to this uh, musculature the stimulation to this vagus nerve causes the relaxation of this pyloric sphincter and contraction of these uh, muscles of this body so that the food particle will uh, uh, empty from the stomach and enters into the duodenum this is the vagus nerve and the sympathetic nerve here we see the sympathetic nerve that supplies the stomach uh, here is the sixth uh, thoracic ganglion from sixth to tenth thoracic ganglion there is the greater sphincteric nerve and this greater splanchnic nerve uh, in the right side and left side uh, supplies the stomach um, forming a plexus this uh, sympathetic ganglia is the celiac ganglia and the, here is the celiac plexus this celiac plexus supplies the stomach and uh, the uh, action of this uh, sympathetic uh, stimulation to this stomach is the a mm, uh, closure or uh, the contraction of this pyloric sphincter and the uh, secretion uh, of the stomach will be reduced and important thing that the pain from this uh, stomach will be carried uh, through this uh, mm, through this greater splanchnic nerve uh, so pain stimulation in this stomach will be transmitted to this a thoracic ganglia and the thoracic segment of the um, spinal cord and finally it will uh, move upward these are the um, uh, control of the muscles of the stomach now the mucosa of the stomach in this uh, uh, picture we see from the muscularis mucosa to the uh, columnar epithelium all things are the mucosa in the stomach the mucosa are 
uh, folding in different areas. In along the laser curvature, there are prominent folds along the long axis of the stomach. This is known as the gastric canal. And other parts of the stomach, there are numerous folds randomly present within the stomach. This is known as the rugi. And in uh, close view, we see here is the mucosa of the uh, stomach. Here we see there is the surface epithelium. This epithelium is columnar epithelium and simple columnar epithelium. This epithelium secretes the mucosa and the bicarbonate, uh, this uh, epithelium cells. And there are, um, uh, there are uh, specialization of epithelium cell along the downward. Here you see there is a depressed area within the mucosa that is lined by both sides the um, columnar epithelium. This is known as the gastric pit. This is the gastric pit and uh, this picture is clearly seen in this image. Here we see there is a, there is the gastric pit. Uh, uh, here is the gastric mucosa and here is the gastric pit. In the gastric pit, we see there this neck part is known as the gastric pit and this part is known as the uh, isthmus or neck of the um, gastric gland and this uh, deep part is known as the gastric gland. So in, uh, in the stomach, you can see here is the gastric pit, here is the gastric gland and here is the neck or isthmus. So, uh, this, uh, this upper part, that is the surface epithelium, simple columnar epithelium, we, we have uh, told that there is the, uh, there is the uh, surface mucus cell that secretes the uh, bicarbonate and the mucus. Here in this neck, there is an important cell that is known as the mucus uh, neck cell. Here, this colorful cell is the mucus neck cell that secretes the acidic fluid containing the mucin. This is the mucus neck cell. And uh, in, in, uh, in the deep area, there is the, um, there is the uh, pink cell that is known as the parietal cell or auxentic cell that secretes the hydrochloric acid into the gastric lumen. This is the gastric lumen. This uh, cell has also some microvilli uh, and here you see there is a magnified view of the uh, gastric um, uh, uh, parietal cell. Here is the parietal cell that uh, uh, that has uh, the um, vascular area um, and there is the apical area that is within the stomach. And this is the stomach lumen, this is the vascular bed. Uh, here uh, is the um, uh, parietal cell or the um, auxentic cell. In this parietal cell, we see there is the uh, carbon dioxide and water. This carbon dioxide and water uh, combines to form the uh, carbonic acid. This carbonic acid through the um, enzyme, the uh, carbonic anhydrase, it is divided into the hydrogen ion and the bicarbonate ion. Uh, so from this, uh, uh, this the parietal cell, the bicarbonate ion is um, released into the blood with the exchange of the chloride ion. So the bicarbonate ion is left into the blood and the chloride ion enters into this cell and the hydrogen ion from this parietal cell they secreted into this gastric pit. Here is the hydrogen ion and this chloride ion from the blood and the hydrogen ion from this parietal cell they combine to form this hydrochloric acid and this is the secretion of the stomach of the hydrochloric acid. So, parietal cell is the, um, uh, here is the parietal cell that secretes the acid into this gastric pit. Here is the sip cell or zymogenic cell that secretes the um, pepsinogen that finally convert into the pepsin. And uh, in the deep part we see there is the Z cell. Uh, this Z cell uh, secretes the gastrin and they present in this uh, in the fundic gland in the uh, in the stomach in the stomach here is the gastric, uh, gastric gland um, uh, gastric uh, gastric gland gastric pit this gland is divided into uh, uh, into the area where they are present in this uh, pylorus there is the pyloric gland in this cardiac there is the cardiac glands these cardiac glands are very simple they simple uh, they secrete the 
mm, they secrete the only the mucin. This complex structure are not present in this cardiac gland. And in this pyloric part, uh, this deep area, there is the there is the Z cell that secretes the gastrin. This is an enzyme. And other part of the stomach, in this body of the stomach, in this body of the stomach, this deep part has some other uh, form of the um, of the, uh, this neuroendocrine cells. These neuroendocrine cells are named as the um, enterochromaffin cell. Here you see, you see the enterochromaffin cell, and uh, uh, sometimes it is also known as the argentafin cell. Or sometimes it is known as the aput cell. Aput means amine precursor uh, uh, uptake and decarboxylation. Or sometimes it is known as the diffuse neuro neuroendocrine system (DNES). All the things are uh, called uh, this type of the this this type of the neuroendocrine gland that present in this gastric pit or the gastric glands. Uh, in the uh, fundus, these are the Z cell. On other part, uh, other part, there are uh, there are some neuroendocrine cells that secret the serotonin, and the fundus they secret the gastrin. These are the neuroendocrine glands. Uh, so this uh, type of the cells present in this gastric uh, pit and gastric gland. So this is the uh, mucosa. This is the mucosa. And when there is the excessive acid secretion, uh, the hydrochloric acid secretion uh, in this uh, stomach, uh, the mucosa of the stomach, there is the erosion of this uh, mucosa, the erosion of this mucosa forming an ulcer. This ulcer is known as the peptic ulcer. And when there is a uh, ulcer in this part uh, that will uh, produce a pain, this pain is transmitted into the um, central nervous system through the uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic uh, nerves. Um, so this uh, this may cause the pain, and that is known as the gastric pain. And the treatment of this uh, over acid secretion is uh, here is the secretion of the proton. Uh, here is the secretion of the proton, and that there is a pump that secretes this proton into this uh, gastric lumen. Uh, or gastric pit. So there is a drug that inhibit this pump that is known as the proton pump inhibitor. This proton pump inhibitor is omeprazole, pentoprazole, isomeprazole, uh, deslensoprazole uh, or desisomeprazole. All these things are the proton pump inhibitor that uh, inhibit this pump so that there is less secretion into the stomach. So this is the mucosa of the stomach and all about the stomach. Thank you all.